I'm going to present part of my PhD project. And the idea is to talk a little bit about um, the adaptive genetic variation um, associated with drought hardness in coastal and interior Douglas fir. And I'm going to touch a little bit of its interplay uh, with on, on the interplay with cold hardness. So, of course, before I get started here with my presentation, I would like to acknowledge and thank these amazing researchers, but above all, amazing people that I was fortunate enough to, to work with and to interact with. Um, so without them, of course, um, all everything that I'm presenting here or nothing that I'm presenting here would be possible. So thanks. Um, so my, my presentation is divided into three main parts. So in the first one, I'm gonna touch a little bit on the phenotypic variation among provenances in, in drought hardness. The second part of my talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, show you how we can explore the within provenance variation in drought hardness to identify um, adaptive genetic variation uh, with this approach case control to us. And then in the final part, I'm gonna present the interplay with cold hardness. So <clears throat> we know for quite a long time that local um, that conifers or populations of conifers are locally adapted to their local environment so and one of the main drivers of this local adaptation is cold temperature um, however with climate change drought is becoming more frequent and more intense um, and this can probably become a very form of stroke and this is a very strong force of selection and might become also a driver of local adaptation. And I should mention that the local adaptation to cold conditions is very consistent across um, the species in temperate and border regions. So this is not different for Douglas fir. Douglas fir is a very important species economically and ecologically in North America, but also in other parts of the world where it was introduced, for example, in Europe. So Douglas fir is also known for quite a long time to be locally adapted to their um, local environments. Um, and there is some evidence in the literature for local adaptation to drought as well. However, most of those studies focused on, at least to my knowledge, uh, a particular region of the species and not the whole range of the species. And also most of the, the studies <clears throat> were conducted with adult trees or saplings and not with seedlings. And we know that seedlings are very uh, affected by selection or highly affected by selection. So um, what we want to do here is basically explore the variation in seedlings and um, across the range of the species. So with that in mind, I asked these two main questions. So how is drought hardness in seedlings distributed across the range of Douglasfer? And how strong is the signal of local adaptation to drought? <clears throat> So to try to answer those questions, we established a comb garden experiment with um, 87 seed lots, spanning a huge variation in terms of the environment. Um, this experiment had half of the, the plants being submitted to a drought to death treatment and the other half um, was used as a control. And here you have a picture of the experiment. Um, so we used a very simple approach to um, <clears throat> to study the drought hardness there. So we measured chlorophyll fluorescence over time, multiple times on all the plants. And we fitted this very simple linear regressions uh, for each individual and extract this low and use this low of those uh, fitted lines as a proxy for drought hardness. <clears throat> so uh, here you have two examples, one of the less hardy and one of the most hardy individual, uh, more hardy individual. So here is, you can see some of our results. Um, on the map, you see the distribution of drought hardness in seedlings. And it's, it's quite clear that, that the pattern that you can see here, that the two varieties are <clears throat> very different from each other, just by looking at the colors here. And in fact, when we partition the variants, we see that um, there's a, a quite amount, a, a quite, large amount of variation in, uh, between the two varieties. So we tested for, for that difference. And this difference was highly significant between the two varieties. 
So it kind of makes sense to separate the two varieties to um, explore a bit more. Um, so we partition the various variances for each variety. And as we can see here, most of the variation in drought hardness um, <clears throat> can be explained by the within provinces variation and not among provinces variation, um, especially on the coast. On the coast, basically, um, all the variation was uh, observed within provinces and not among provinces. And in the interior variety, we, we see some signal of local adaptation with um, 30, 13% of differentiation uh, for drought hardness among provinces. So <clears throat> we tested um, this drought hardness um, phenotype uh, for the relationship with, with some climatic variables that we expect to have an effect on drought hardness, on drought hardness. So in this case here, mean annual uh, precipitation, and we do see um, a pattern here, so a decline with mean annual precipitation. However, when we separate the two varieties, we see that this pattern basically disappears. So it kind of also makes sense to separate this two, uh, the, these provenances into um, the smaller groups <clears throat> and task for this relationship in, in the smaller groups too. Um, I should mention here that the, the grouping part that we did here, it's a geographical um, grouping, but it's supported by our um, genomic data. So we performed PCA to see if those groups um, hold true. So um, when we separate into groups and analyze into smaller groups, we see that those patterns might even go in another direction. So <clears throat> for some groups, that relationship might be very important for other groups, not that, that much. And sometimes the direction also changes. And here's another example. For example, here is the mean summer precipitation that seemed to be important for, for the California uh, group here, but not as much for the other group <clears throat> or in the other direction. So probably other um, climates um, or other climatic variable might affect um, in, in the other direction, direction too. So um, since I'm talking about the interplay with cold hardness, it, it also makes sense to test and see if, if um, colder places will also be producing more drought hardy individuals. And in fact, we do see that pattern. So cold, colder places are producing more drought hardy individuals. However, again, when we look into the smaller groups that <clears throat> might be true for some groups, but not for others. Um, and this um, relates to what Santi was talking about in, in the other presentations that in, in harsher places, selection is much stronger and it might have an effect um, on the trade here and, and the evolution of the trade. Um, so can we kind of answer those questions? Partially, yes. Yeah. So a strong differentiation between varieties was observed and most of the variation for growth hardness is within provinces. And what about the local adaptation? Well, there, there is evidence for local adaptation across the entire range, if we consider all the, the provinces. However, we should pay attention to um, <clears throat> the local groups that might have, might, might have different, um, a different relationship with those climatic variables. So with that, I move to the second part where I'm exploring that within provenance variation, since it's so large, we talked, it, it might be possible to explore that within provenance variation to detect adaptive variants or genetic variants uh, associated with the trade. <clears throat> so to do that, um, we established a second experiment with a subsample of the populations. And here, in this case, we are using um, more seedlings per population. So each box that we're seeing here had one provenance with all the seedlings um, of the provenance there. So we can basically say that each province had its own experiment. <laughs> so as an example, provenance one here, we submitted to the same type of treatment, so drought, drought to death, fitted the same type of uh, progression lines and extracted the slopes. And with that, we, we were able to identify um, what we are calling cases here, which are the 10 least drought hard individuals in that provenance and the 10 most drought hardy or most drought hardy individuals in, in the same province and form uh, pools of individuals. So we had basically two pools 
for each provenance. So here is a picture of the experiment over time. So how we did that, we basically ranked those lobes. Um, and group them into the two groups that we were interested, cases and controls. And then we tested for the difference between cases and controls within each provenance. And they were um, highly significant. We did that for all the 20 populations or, or provenances. So <clears throat> with those groups um, from each population, what we did was we uh, extracted the DNA of those individuals and formed DNA pools. We performed sequencing with uh, targeted exome capture. Um, and we were able, after all the bioinformatics work, <clears throat> thanks to Brennan Lind, um, we were able to assign uh, little frequencies to each of those groups in each province. So what we did was with the difference in the little frequency between these three groups, we tested for the association with uh, the, the trait in this case, rock hardness, using the CMH test to detect the, the, um, the associated uh, SNPs. So we are able to identify uh, around 1,000 thousand SNPs per, per um, variety. Um, however, what we can see here is a very uh, surprising result, which is only two SNPs overlap between the two varieties, despite the fact that they're very similar. However, <clears throat> We should, we should, um, I should emphasize here that we were not focusing or looking for um, causative SNPs, but rather the SNPs that were uh, close to the, the, the causative region in, in the genome or, or linked to those regions. So what we did was we <clears throat> mapped the transcriptome to the genome and after doing that, we located each SNP in, um, and, and saw if, if, if the SNPs was closer within a, a T contig, what we can also call as genes here. And this number kind of increases a little bit. It's still surprisingly low. <clears throat> but, um, and, and of course, this is a substrate for further investigations that we are definitely super interested to know more about. So we are going to keep doing the analysis on this, on this to see why this is the case. So yes, we can definitely identify um, adaptive genetic variants using this approach. It's quite a powerful approach. So with that, I move to the third and final part of my, my talk, which is <clears throat> we basically looked um, at the same thing for, for cold hardness and see if, and saw if we can see, could see any um, overlap between the two. Um, so we asked, basically asked this question here, can we see pleiotropic genes affecting uh, cold and drought hardness? So we did a third experiment here, uh, tested for cold hardness in this case, fall cold hardness. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the details because of time, but you can ask after the presentation more about the details here. So we, again, um, established the cases and controls and perform kind of the same um, approach. And again, we're able to identify many SNPs and also the genes that are associated with um, cold hardness here. Um, after that, we basically took all the, the genes that were identified with, with drought hardness and um, associated with drought hardness and the ones that were associated with cold hardness and um, checked for the overlap, and surprisingly, uh, we found much more overlap uh, in the interior <clears throat> in the interior than um, in the coastal re uh, on the coastal on the coastal region. So um, again, this um, still needs to be better explored, and um, we can definitely talk more about the details after the presentation. So with that, I would like to conclude by saying that signal of local adaptation to drought is weak for the interior variety, but it's almost absent for um, the coastal variety if we look at the variety level. <clears throat> at the regional level, signals of local adaptation vary quite a lot and um, the, in, in direction and strength and also um, the climatic factor that is affecting the trade. 
Um, so local adaptation, we can say that local adaptation is scale dependent, um, depending on how we analyze that. Um, so we detect a substantial amount of variation of the same provenances. And with that, we were able, were able to successfully identify adaptive genetic variants associated with the trade. Um, there are some pleiotropic genes that we will definitely explore more to see why, why that's the case. And it's quite a, an interesting finding here. Um, so I should also say that the results of this study will be used to inform assisted gene flow strategies to mitigate the effects of climate change and also breeding programs. And I should also mention that some of the results of this study uh, was used to create um, or to construct a SNP sheet for Douglas fir that will become available very soon. We are just in the phase of, of testing um, the variants. So with that, I would like to thank all the people who helped me establishing the experiment, uh, providing the seeds and measuring the, the plants <clears throat> and all our uh, sponsors. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>